But now, the United States takes over from Britain as the new ruling state in the world. In the same way that Britain had a mysterious relationship with the Holy Land and with the Jews, the United States now has that mysterious relationship with the Holy Land and with the Jews. The first country in the world to recognize the state of Israel is the United States of America. Is that by accident? We are located at that moment in time. We recognize that there's another people living here. Let's see what we can work out. No, the whole idea of Israel until today is this is our country from the Mediterranean to the Jordan River, and it's only our country. It's exclusively our country. There is no other people. There's a bunch of Arabs living here, that we know. But there's no people, there's no other people with a claim to the country, with a legitimate right to the country. This is our country. Therefore, either you shut up, if you're a Palestinian, and you live in one of the little islands we'll give you, by sufferance, not by rights, or get out. And as power has been handed over from the United States to Israel, as the ruling state in the world, events have been put into play to secure its rulership. And it is this rulership that has become the basis of most of the world's problems. Since September the 11th, wars and deals that have been signed have taken place for the sole protection, establishment, and security of the State of Israel, where any opposition will always be fought. It all began, as it always does, with Shaitan. Most secret societies and secret orders tend to attach themselves to the Prophet Soleiman. The most famous of these secret orders being the Freemasons. One of the most central and influential aspects of driving the ideology of the Freemasons is the concept of rebuilding the Temple of Solomon. Other orders include the Jewish mystical schools, the Kabbalah, who practice magic that we claim to have learned from the Prophet Suleiman. In fact, there is some truth to this concept, that there existed the teaching of magic during Solomon's time and before it. However, the origin of the magic did not come from Prophet Suleiman, but from Babylon. We know from history that the kingdom of the Jews was destroyed by the Babylonian king, Nebuchadnezzar. After defeating and breaking apart the Jewish kingdom, the Jews back to Babylon, or modern-day Iraq, as slaves. It was in Babylon where the Jews faced great oppression and tyranny dictatorship that ruled there. It was also in Babylon that, having been cut off from the scripture, the Torah, the Jews of that time were forced to write a new scripture they named the Talmud. A group of 70 rabbis had come together in writing this book, after being influenced by the environment around them, which has now become the central law of Talmudic Jews. Whilst in Babylon, they had also acquired the knowledge of magic. During and before the time of King Solomon, there were devils, certain jinn, who were teaching the people magic and the dark arts. The Prophet Suleiman came to know about these devils. He took away from the people all of their manuscripts and recordings of these teachings and buried them under his throne. The Talmud was influenced by the teachings of Babylon, the teachings of one of the cursed civilizations in Islam, where King Nimrod reigned during the age of Abraham. It teaches Zionists that they are a supreme race, that all others are lesser beings. It aims for several agendas surrounding Jerusalem and the Temple of Solomon. 
These goals are heavily tied up with the origins of secret societies. They didn't reappear for more than a thousand years when knights from the First Crusade discovered secret vaults beneath the Temple of Solomon. You see, the knights who found the vaults believed that the treasure was too great for any one man, not even the king. They brought the treasure back to Europe and took the name, the Knights Templar. Over the next century, they smuggled it out of Europe. They formed a new brotherhood called the Freemasons in honor of the builders of the great temple. Now look here, man. The Freemasons among our founding fathers left us clues like these. The unfinished pyramid, the all-seeing eye, symbols of the Knights Temple, guardians of the treasure. They're speaking to us through these. A treasure beyond all of imagining. Creating a new world order where faith is lost and the masses are blind and ignorant, and by dividing and conquering those who are ready to oppose. The Illuminati was established by banking dynasty and self-proclaimed Satanists, the Rothschilds. Who do you think is really in control today? The Zionist banking families, mainly the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers. Who financed Hitler and the world wars? The Rothschilds and the Rockefellers. In order to fulfill their prophecy of their Messiah, by pushing the people back into the Holy Land, which to them is one of the last steps in building the world for their Messiah. The Rothschilds, whose front companies had helped finance Hitler and the Jewish slave labor camps, had turned Jewish Holocaust victims into victimizers. Imprisoned inside barbed wire refugee camps, the Palestinians began to resemble the victims of Nazi concentration camps. According to author Simon Shama, the Rothschilds own 80% of the land of Israel. Even the flag of Israel flies the hexagram symbol from the Rothschild family's red shield. The hexagram has six points, six triangles, and six sides on the central hexagram. For millennia, Jerusalem's Temple Mount has been at the forefront of the battle of the great monotheistic religions. And once again today, passions are threatening to spill over into bloodshed. I want the whole world to hear me. Al-Aqsa is in danger. Al-Aqsa is in danger. As God is my witness, I tell you, someone is conspiring to destroy Al-Aqsa. Yesterday evening, the police, Jerusalem District Department, assessed the situation. We're continuing our police measures in order to maintain the situation. Thank you.